to the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. We really apologize. We're a very responsible ministry, and my heart goes out to all those who do not have seats, or those who are outside. We really apologize. Praise God. You can add more chairs in front. Bring them in front. Don't feel embarrassed. Relax. Make yourself very comfortable. One of the reasons why men of God do not get blessed and one of the reasons why God does not honor many ministries with people is because they do not know that ministry is all about people. Hallelujah. When you treat people like animals, they will not come to your church or to your meeting. Hallelujah. Forget the fact that we teach and say, okay, the Holy Spirit is this. If you like, don't come and get blessed. By the time you see empty pews again and again, you must change your confession. We treat people with honor and dignity because the Bible says, now we do not yet appear we shall, what we shall be like. We realize that we are treating men and women of royalty, men of dignity. Only God can tell how far. Because the word of God that we teach and preach is the incorruptible word of God that is able to make any man become great. Once again, we apologize. Thank you, Jesus. So tonight I'm teaching on one of those keys again. Many of us have been receiving these keys again and again. Please just indicate by way of lifting your hands if you know that you are gaining understanding into the operation of spiritual things. Let me see your hands. That you can, like a doctor, look at someone's life right now. Hallelujah. Come, sir. Can I use you? If this brother comes to us right now and he says, I'm being oppressed by demons and powers of darkness, I expect anyone who has been faithfully listening to these teachings and even the many thousands and millions online who are following us, listen, I expect that you should be able to profess solution to this brother. Hallelujah. And that solution is not to take him to joshua selman if you if the solution is to take him to joshua selman then you are not learning enough because the goal is not for one man to stand and become alpha and omega the goal is that by the investments of the word of god in you you are able to have the ability the revelation the faith and the anointing to legislate on behalf of heaven hallelujah so i expect just anybody at all to be able to walk up to this brother and say brother if you are in christ you are seated with christ in heavenly places and although this is true don't feel embarrassed it doesn't mean that because you are going through what you are going through the word of god is a lie i am here as an ambassador to enforce that verdict in your life hallelujah and then you expect the backing of heaven if this brother comes right now and says nothing is working in my life there's no job, there's no finance, there's no marriage, there's no open door. I'm a failure all round. I expect any of us to be able to sit with this brother in three days. And by the revelation, the strategic revelation of the word of God, you should be able to bless him. Listen, the knowledge of the word is a gift you can give people. Hallelujah. 
I can count money, my brother, even if it is one million naira. If I give you, it will finish. Either by carelessness or fruitful use, it will still finish. Are you getting my point now? But if I deposit in you, notice my choice of words, the strategic word of God. Not just the word of God by his stripes. No, not by his stripes. Um, tithe, give, be blessed, and so on and so forth. That is not strategic. You don't teach people that way. That's information. Hallelujah. Teaching means to bring you into the understanding of the operation of kingdom principles. That's what it means to understand. When you understand a thing, you can explain it. If it is still vague, you only know it. You don't understand it. The proof that you understand a truth in the kingdom is that you can teach it confidently. Hallelujah. Bless you, sir. Thank you. Tonight, I'm sharing very briefly and then we'll pray on a message I titled Koinonia, Ancient Secrets to Power and Relevance. Koinonia and then colon, Ancient Secrets to Power and relevance please listen to this message tonight i truly believe it's very powerful and it will change our lives his grace your grace i'm nothing without you it's grace, your grace shines on me. It's your grace, your grace. Lord, I'm nothing without you. Your grace, your grace shines on me listen you know why i took this song you know how confident i am about life you cannot imagine it's not arrogance ah look see when you see me teach these truths the bible says i found your word and i did eat them and they became a joy and a rejoicing to my soul. If I buy shares for you, you may be happy. And you may feel secured. Right? If I connect you to a rich man, you may be happy and feel secured. If I connect you to an anointed man, you may feel happy and secured. But brothers and sisters, when you are connected to the revelation of the truths of the kingdom, is the ultimate secret for confidence in life. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's, it's, like, it's like beer that intoxicates. Until it has become true in your life, you may not understand. This is why Paul even had to correct himself. He said, we make our boasting, but then he said in the Lord, so that you will not be misunderstood. The word of God gives you such a level of confidence. All of a sudden, when you understand the principles of the kingdom, you will now begin to connect the equations of life. You will now find out that as haphazard as life looks, there is a formula that governs its operation. Are you getting what I'm saying? You will just know that nothing just happens. There is a formula. Listen, when you find it, you have found it. It may, it may cost you to find it. But brothers and sisters, when you find it, it's an asset. You don't need to refrigerate it. I keep saying it. You don't need to keep it with another untrusted person. It's yours. And it's yours for life. Hallelujah. Receive the word. Receive the word. Receive the word. It's your way out of mediocrity in life. It's your way out of irrelevance. I don't know what you may be going through right now. And I don't care how bad things are in your life. I'm telling you the truth. Brothers and sisters, if you receive the word of the kingdom, the strategic understanding of the operation of the kingdom, you are a champion. 
and no power in existence can stop it. It's not about prophecy. It's not just about laying on of hands. It's about coming to a point where you are built by knowledge. So when you look at life, the thing that makes others panic, it no longer makes you panic. Because you understand the hidden operation of these realities. Many people just wait for the physical consequences of whatever happens in the spirit. And then they try to manage it when it appears physically. That's a risky way of living. Hallelujah. The Bible says, they that know their God. Daniel 11.32, the B part. It said, they shall be strong. And in this life, they will do exploits. There are some of us here who are ministers of the gospel and we are trusting God to stamp his hand upon our lives. I'm telling you, this is the way it works. There are some of us who are great leaders, corporate leaders, great people in different areas of our lives. There are some of us who have come on behalf of ourselves and the numerous confused people that we have in our lineage and we know that we are the saviors if we miss it there might not be a door of opportunity but i have good news for you they said about jesus can anything good come out of nazareth the word of god has equal value to any man there's no tribalism about the word of god i hate tribalism you would have noticed that i hate tribalism of any sort because the word of God places us in the same position. Your only limitation is your degree of persistence and your degree of passion to spiritual things. What the word of God will do to a Hausa man, it will do to a Yoruba man. What the word of God will do to an Igbo person, it will do to a South South person. What the word of God will do to an illiterate, it will do to a professor. The word of God has equal value. If it is received, believed, and acted upon this for me is the ultimate representation of god's justice that god is a just man truly because if the word of god had a way of becoming an advantage unto others by default then we'd have said god god is playing injustice somewhere that means the word of god gives me the same opportunity the same opportunity the same opportunity and through the months the last two three months we've been talking about several things i am very proud of the fact that a majority of the people in this meeting are young people i'm very proud of it years ago let me tell you something years ago when god started with us and we started this great thing that we see today a lot of people felt it's just young people but they have forgotten that the man celebrating 50 years today was once a young man who was misled with wrong information and he he confused himself to old age and so for me a man of god said the lord told him something he said give me the youth and i will give you a new nation some of our parents are too old to effect change they will only leverage on our own transformation. Are you getting what I'm saying? Some of you are in children ministry and when you are talking to the children, you just look at them, little children. Hello. Wake up and see those who were. I still remember very vividly when I was very, very small. If you have forgotten, you are really old. hallelujah i remember i remember a few commitments that i made in my life to seek god i have no regret because i always say this young people have time but they lack knowledge they are inexperienced they are naive old people don't have time but they have learned the lesson through pain but there's no time to correct it so we have the advantage of knowledge and time and I will get all the knowledge and do great things for the kingdom hallelujah 
isn't it amazing that some of the truths we are hearing a number of people here are married but most of us many of us here are not married is it not a great blessing to know that your children will not eye you one day and say goodness what sort of father are you or what sort of mother are you are you not happy that your generation will look at you and say we were blessed to have you hallelujah I give God all the glory I treasure this ministry I treasure that which God is doing it is an opportunity to transform lives I said this thing about five six years ago that we are all going to be great and the great part is we all know one another yes we we'll remember one another do not underestimate what the Holy Ghost is doing in the lives of people this is a renaissance it's a revolution it's like the foxes that Samson set on fire and just sent them. There are some of you sitting down here. Even you, you do not know how mighty. Who knows? Maybe there are wives of presidents in this place. What is wrong with that? I love that lady. She lifted her hands and said, Hallelujah. In other words, I'm not sitting in the presence of God for nothing. There are multi- billionaire conglomerate owners who are spirit filled see that an apostolic not just wild people advancing hell they understand strategic kingdom advancement there are men and women of god who carry anointing indeed there will be very little competition when we start manifesting because great will be the grace upon us there will not be need for envying people. We will celebrate one another because we have become colleagues in victory. So I can be invited for a meeting. I may, I may not be able to go. I'll say, sir, please go for me. And I know that Christ will be glorified. It's not about one great MOG. That's why we are pressing. The earth will see wonders. Ah every man before he was used of god he believed he was nothing but not when god stretches his hands upon you he will make a wonder lord we thank you for what you are doing i treasure and i appreciate what god is doing in my life and i'm encouraging you do not trivialize what god is doing in your life not everybody is as yielded as you are i hope you know that this is friday night there are many disco halls that are open. What's the time? It's the right time when everything is open. And trust me, there are some people sowing to the flesh, making generous investments unto death. But you are here building your spirit. There is the justice system of God. Do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. Whatsoever, not a preacher, a man sows. Brothers, you are standing now, but you are already sowing for your children. School fees will be paid. You are not even aware when it was paid. That's how blessed it can be. Because you will bless people. Your child will become a millionaire at age five. Not because you did anything. It's a privilege. They will make all your children head boy, head girl. It's not head boy anything. It's just to bring the favor of God to the school. I can imagine how my children will be. You know, I think about this thing. Let me tell you something very humorous. A lady during my birthday, she's here. She bought me baby shoes as birthday gift. And I said, goodness. That's, that's for another day. That's for another day. That's for another day. <laughs> Do you believe in what God is doing in your life? Yeah. That you will end certain cycles. A day will come your name will become a password to favor for people that when when there are barriers and there's nothing to do they don't need to start shouting jesus foolish they say i know this gentleman see you know him are you sure please ah. may it happen oh god may it happen may it happen may it happen yes it will happen so let people laugh at you no problem let them criticize you no problem pay the price now sisters i can guarantee you you are going to marry very good men it's a guarantee
like don't say amen i can guarantee you don't you think forget the fact that these brothers are wearing sandals and their jeans are faded what is in them he said though our outward man perish yet the inward man is being renewed you hold on they may not have forget about all these men that come with jeeps you have already seen their future you don't know the future of these ones those of you who are gullible following every man on, calm down you will see the rising when you see the son of man in power and glory you will remember brothers take your gary honorably give jesus praise because you're already counting days and same for the brothers i guarantee that you will marry virtuous ladies yes see the bible says he that finds a wife a, a wife is not the name of a lady a wife is 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 a is a is 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 a personal it's not a personality it's a what do i call it it's an office you must be a wife before you become found it's a he that finds a wife not he who's finding makes her a wife that, that's for another <laughs> ah, some of you are happy you wish i'll just continue you like this love and relationship thing We're taking over the mountains yes we are we are we are say after me i'm great please say it with revelation i am great this is not just it's not just those childish confession i am great i'm really great say i'm influential thank you jesus koinonia ancient secrets to power and relevance blessed be the name of the lord write this word down the teaching has begun please make sure you have something right you just shouted i'm great i'm great please write all your phones if you don't have don't feel bad don't be under pressure but next time please get a notebook not just a jotter that you bring out from the back of your pocket have a very good hard cover note see this this means a lot of things about you it means i am responsible i mean business about my life i'm not a joker and i'm going somewhere when you get a good hardcover notebook when you slip pieces of paper and with broken virus that are all stained it tells me the quality of your appreciation for your future write this word down uncommon <sighs> help us holy spirit sharing something very spiritual and i trust that the power of god will back up the things that we're teaching tonight write that word down uncommon because this is what you are becoming the word uncommon means to be needed it means to be needed it means to be in high demand to be in high demand it means to be significant are you writing please it means i like this one not easily replaceable to be uncommon means that you are not easily replaceable it means worthy of honor to be uncommon means that you are worthy of honor it means you are an endangered species it means you are scarce you are highly prized i'm just talking hallelujah the revelation of the word of god is making us uncommon uncommon means you do not find it anywhere uncommon means you don't pick it on the ground gold is a treasured metal because you have to dig the earth to find it no one treasures sand so much because you can bend down and just pick it up so god is making us uncommon pray in one minute before i start teaching say lord you are making me uncommon i receive of that ministry i receive of that ministry
pray you're making me uncommon i'm becoming uncommon i'm a joy to my family to all those around me blessed be the name of the lord hallelujah the word koinonia please write it down the word koinonia means there are actually seven meanings it's a greek word from the text that we just took the word koinonia it has seven meanings but i'll just focus on three of them number one it means communion the coming together of two people it means intimacy a state of closeness that brings about oneness intimacy and number three it means partnership or joint participation partnership or joint participation i have discovered in my life and i've studied from scripture that this word koinonia enshrined in this word is the revelation that holds the key to true power true anointing many of us when you see a man that is mightily being used by god we say this man is anointed or this is a powerful man of god or this man is full of grace you know and so on and so forth to mean that there is a rich deposit of the ability of the holy spirit in that man's life and tonight i want to show you the secret because there is a secret i call it an ancient secret an ancient secret that is responsible for power genuine authentic power the ancient secret that is responsible for timeless relevance relevance that cuts across dispensations relevant that cuts across age and geographic barriers koinonia that word hmm. every man in scripture we we see when when you read from genesis down to revelation you see that god used all sorts of people he used tamaras he used thieves doubting people temperous people educated people illiterate people so there were all kinds of people with their personality differences and temperaments but one thing happened to them all they had encounters and they came into this mystery called koinonia and that was the secret of the rich deposit of the spirit in their lives and it made them relevant through the dispensation of their generations and some of them were even referred to in dispensations that were not their own for instance abraham we make reference to him transgenerational relevance koinonia everybody say koinonia there is a state of intimacy and fellowship that you have with the holy spirit that will translate into the anointing of the spirit working in your life and tonight i'm going to guide us very briefly into it and then we'll pray there is something that you can know you know through the past months we've been exploring the concept of relevance success impact and all of that because it is very important it's not only enough for us to explore prayer spiritual things the gifts of the spirit you know and so on and so forth it, many of us will be consoled our christian experience will comfort us when we begin to learn the principles that make us relevant hallelujah koinonia that secret that the ancient knew right now we teach all kinds of formulas and i love principles we teach methods of getting the anointing I've, I've read a lot of books especially in recent times there are all kinds of books and all kinds of things that attempt to teach people on the anointing and i'm telling you unfortunately many of these people that write these books have not demonstrated the reality of the anointing in their lives and so they have written theological dissertations about the anointing and the workings of the anointing and the way it translates into making a man relevant and many people have applied these principles 
right now we 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 think the anointing is something or the power of the holy spirit is just a formula do a do b and then automatically it will happen no no you are dealing with somebody you are dealing with a personality you are not dealing with an animal you're not dealing with an object you're not dealing with a machine you are dealing with a real person who has emotions a real person who has a who can you can have fellowship with and if you do not understand koinonia then you may never taste kingdom relevance in your lifetime hallelujah fellowship the fellowship of the spirit here paul begins to speak in in second corinthians he said the grace of our lord jesus christ that grace is also the love of god and it says the fellowship of the spirit the fellowship the constant coming together the joint participation between you and the spirit let it remain with you i hope you know that the corinthian church were a powerful church it was it was in first corinthians 12 down to 14 that paul began to talk to the corinthian church because they were walking mightily in the gifts of the spirit they were moving in spiritual things paul even had to talk to them and in first corinthians 14 verse 40 he said let all things be done decently and in order he had to come in and bring order because the demonstration of the spirit upon their life was so rich it was creating chaos and the secret he encourages them to keep doing what they had been doing that brought the glory and the power of God. And he said, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship. Do not ignore fellowship with the Holy Spirit, he was telling them. Make sure that you do not get too busy in life and in ministry. Make sure you do not become so much of a, a, a minister, a preacher, a celebrity. That you forget the fellowship of the spirit because your relevance is tied to it this is what paul was trying to let the corinthian church know that the fellowship of the spirit be let it remain let it not become an occasional thing because the church was getting famous they were doing great things they were getting busy just like many of us are becoming busy let me tell you something with people when they start out with God because there are no invitations permit my bias I'm talking about ministers but it applies to every area of our lives as a minister when you're starting out no one knows you there's no ministry there's no invitation no grace speaking so it is easy to stay in the place of fellowship and I'll share a few components of that you know you stay you experience that koinonia you can dedicate a whole day a whole week but then something happens when you start becoming busy there are all kinds of ministrations here and there you have invitations and you have to even select which one to go and which one not to go at that point the the grace and the impetus to continue koinonia is affected because right now there is nothing to lose even if you stay for one month and you don't read anything there are tapes that have recorded the workings of god in your life and those tapes will open doors of ministration when you stand there will always be something to share and god cannot deny himself so you will still see the grace of god here and there in your meeting and then many people become stunted and many people even lose relevance i preached the message and you can get the teaching the secret of sustained glory i think it's a preparatory message to what i'm sharing tonight and if you don't have it you can get it from the media it's free the secret of sustained glory the secret of transgenerational relevance i don't want to be a man of god who will be relevant for four or five months and then one day they'll say ah i remember we used to know this guy oh he loved god i don't know what happened but it has happened there are so many people like that. In this country, there are men who were relevant in certain seasons. They carried the banner of spiritual things. They pioneered certain great things, but right now their voices are silent. I want to tell you something. When you lose the fellowship of the spirit, you have lost the place of spiritual power and you have lost the place of relevance. When you lose koinonia, 
when this word becomes foreign in your life and through your your words you cannot mention that word frequently again i'm assuring you you have lost spiritual Everybody say koinonia. Say fellowship. That fellowship of the spirit. The psalmist understood this. And he said, cast me not away from your presence. He said, take not your spirit from me. It was the Holy Ghost that took me. It was koinonia that took me from a shepherd boy to become a king over the nation of Israel. And he said, oh Lord, cast me not it's because of the presence of the holy spirit and this participation is because of my joint partnership that i've written so many songs i've written so many hymns that i am considered to be a great king because of one that works together with me and he says oh lord cast me not away let nothing happen in my life and in executing my work that makes you cast me from your presence because at that point i will begin to lose relevance hallelujah this happened to his son called solomon solomon theologically speaking wrote the book of ecclesiastes in his fallen state hallelujah that's why he wrote all sorts of things vanity upon vanity he was angry all his vanity he was communicating frustration because he had done all sorts of things the man who saw the manifest presence of god twice it was solomon who prayed at the dedication of the temple he said now arise so god and come to your resting place it was solomon now solomon had lost the place of koinonia and he began to lose relevance and he wrote the book of ecclesiastes advising people and communicating his frustration he said i gave myself to everything everything my eyes saw that i wanted i got no restraint because you see the place of intimacy is the place of pruning is where god creates boundaries in your life is where god builds you and as you're moving prosperity influence gives you options it enlarges your coast and it takes you returning to the spirit so that he will set boundaries otherwise you will break boundaries until you lose relevance hallelujah it is the absence of koinonia listen to me that can make a man of god begin to walk and live very well and do great things and when he finds out that god has blessed him with a large congregation made up of all kinds of pretty ladies lack of koinonia a visitation and a sustaining um remaining in the secret place that can make him compromise on the secrets and the principles that sustain the anointing until there are all kinds of of trouble in his life all sorts of things here and there disturbing a man of god's wife sleeping with somebody who came for counseling i'm not castigating people the mercy of god is still there but i'm just telling us it can be prevented are you getting my point now you can you can prevent it it can be prevented sorry you don't have to wait until you pass through it and then try to manage it there's a great man of god i honor the man so much he has a television ministry he was a great evangelist mighty evangelist then if there was a little scandal not now that a man of god can even come on stage and say i'm gay and then nothing happens congregation doesn't change then no matter how little the scandal was you've lost your ministry a great man of god by the name jimmy swaggart this man did mighty things he was in the class of Benny Hinn and Reinhard Bonke and all these men of God mighty man but just a little scandal just dropped him down and he's risen back today he's doing great things but he may never be like before again hallelujah a man of God who starts in the secret and now becomes and all that he's obsessed about is cars he he can sit down browsing all through the night all sorts of cars because it's just to make the order and in six weeks he's, he's in his garage lost without restraint everybody say koinonia the secret of true spiritual power i'm teaching us this because it is important that we become relevant what are the components of true fellowship with the Holy Spirit? 
what must happen in your life for us to really say you're fellowshipping with the holy spirit what does it entail koinonia is not just a vague thing it's, it's something that is is you can describe the activities that happen in that secret place number one or before we even talk about them let me just tell you something if you want to enjoy intimacy with the holy spirit the first thing is that you must recognize and respect his ministry in your life you must respect his relevance in your life this is very important very very important i can never be close to you if you do not communicate to me that i am needed in your life is that true how many of you have found yourself restraining yourself from certain people and friends because they act every time you are around as though you are a you are a what you are a pest is that true have you seen people like that even when there is fire falling on their head you say let it fall the last time i went there they treated me like a dog can i tell you something the holy spirit is god make sure you write it the holy spirit is not an archangel the holy spirit is not the first man the holy spirit is god in all the fullness so you must be able to respect and be prepared to receive his ministry i learned that from benny Hinn. till today when benny Hinn stands upon his crusade stage with hundreds of thousands of people and millions of people he gives acknowledgement you know what it means to acknowledge a man go for occasions and you find out that if there are dignitaries seated around they don't start the occasion proper until you acknowledge them in our midst here is so 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 and so and then they say a little bit about the man he was able to do this and while they are doing that the man is excited he's happy and there are ushers already standing close to him say ladies and gentlemen please make welcome this and that and his lovely wife and two of them try to pretend i don't want to go and they say please sir we must we love you too much this seat was made for you and you are acknowledging them and the amount the man did not plan to give he will give it because he was acknowledged the bible says in all your ways acknowledge it didn't say talk to him many of us talk to god but we don't acknowledge him hallelujah do you respect the holy spirit or do you just believe in him i respect his ministry there is an invisible person brothers and sisters that stands close to me take that person away from me two weeks two weeks joshua selman is dead people will keep asking what happened maybe he has gone to babala or maybe the charm was not renewed everything has backfired the presence of the spirit i'm not embarrassed listen and let me use this to teach you the secret of friendship for many of you everybody you come close to runs away from you let me tell you what is wrong now it's not necessarily demons it's because your life creates a picture that trivializes the importance of people in your life the bible says he who wants friends must first show himself friendly if i come to your room and you are frowning because you want to put food and i'm full it's not even that i want to eat but the way you are frowning you are creating a body language that tells me you serve now for you you know you think i'll come there again but when i come and you celebrate me you show genuinely from your heart that if i were to come hundred times you will still receive me a time will come when i will make my habitation in your house there that's what happened to the prophet remember the prophet and the shunammite woman every time he passed when the woman saw him she she made table she studied the things that he liked she put a table for him because she noticed he was always receiving from god and writing and the prophet was so amazed a time came when she even created a room for him and she was blessed do you make room for the spirit you get up in the morning you get up in a whole week and you don't care about him you don't talk to him and then sometimes we come for koinonia and people just tell a lot of lies you are the love of my life ha, love of your life of your life not even of your day of your life i wouldn't trade you 
for silver or gold i was teaching in a ministry and i said hold on do you know what silver and gold is silver and gold ha can change your life and your family i wouldn't trade you for riches untold you are you are my end as a lady when you are singing your husband will just be looking at you you are my everything okay i now see the reason why you don't cook for me again you are not faithful can you give the holy spirit your all can you let him know that i have no ministry without you this is what i tell him in the secret place i say lord people love me today because you love me if i reject you that's the same thing that will happen my life is a reflection of the honor i give to him every time i honor him i find out that people honor me every time i find out that my honor for him is dwindling i see it happen in my life and i run for a retreat quickly hallelujah when you dishonor the holy spirit your life will reflect that dishonor because the glory that keeps you honorable fades away hallelujah see i respect the spirit of god yes i do i do i respect him i honor him i don't just believe in him i've had the opportunity to preach in crusades and meetings and conferences and so many meetings i'm week after week i'm traveling from end to end of this nation preaching and doing mighty things for the kingdom and in every one of these meetings he has not left me without a witness how could i reject him everyone people send me text messages they say a lot of things joshua selman thank you your messages are changing lives your messages are doing this and that and in my mind i say our message holy spirit they just don't know you know that song um what's it they don't know what you mean to me they don't know what you mean to me listen if someone has volunteered to pay your school fees the day you hear the person is sick with a terminal disease what will you do you will run like your life depends on it your school fees is at stake is that true the holy spirit is the key to my relevance if people ever clap for me it's because of him so as they clap for me i only become an usher and i say holy spirit you are the one who deserves it when i stand and i speak i don't have the ability to be everywhere at the same time but as i speak he's the one who touches people his power he makes his power manifest he's the force behind the messages of this ministry that you hear and it does something to you you cannot explain how could i ignore him how could i ignore him based on what what you see in my life is a reflection of his glory if you ignore the holy spirit you have ignored beauty and glory from your life if you have ignored the holy spirit listen god is speaking to us here we started last week many of us have truly ignored the ministry of the holy spirit koinonia many of us have become so busy you have become a business mogul now you have partners in abuja and and lagos and abroad and china you are now a great man you are now a five pointer you nail it at will there's no need for the holy spirit again you are now married no need for crying or dropping any prayer request for life partner and there's no reason to seek him again we must get to that point where we create a secret place every time i listen to mike mudok he takes time to honor the holy spirit and he does it generously from the depths of his heart ladies imagine how your husband will feel when you come up and before you preach you take 10 quality minutes and you just shower honor say i'm a queen because he's a king Aye. 
I'm married because he married me. Ah! The man is there managing all of the blessings that are coming. As soon as you finish, that car that you wanted to buy, you say, um, honey, what did you even say you wanted? Listen, many, I'm, I see, it looks like I'm using everyday joke, but I'm telling you, this is the secret. And can I tell you something, brothers and sisters? The reason why many people are disgraced in public is because they embarrass the Holy Spirit in secret. If you honor him in secret, he will never forget you in public. Many people come on stage. The power of God is going to move. I came all the way to let you see what God will do. And we chorus all sorts of things and get angry at the people. You don't have faith. Open now, receive. What we are meaning is, try, you know, all sorts of things. We lay hands on people, twisting their head up and down. And they say, ah, let me just fall. This man will kill me. Brothers and sisters, the absence of intimacy is always clear. You can't fake it. Hallelujah. Every time, hold this mic, you hear the voice of two people. It's just that it has been woven into one. That's the reason why I can be talking to you outside. You see that? Generally. But once it is time to come into that office, that releases our oneness you will hear another voice hmm. so every time you come to touch me you are touching two people joshua selman is a man but there is the holy spirit standing behind Hiya. when it's time to lay hands on the sick he tells me remember we're in the secret place remember the things that i taught you and so together we lay that hand and while my hand is there's, there's nothing to it but when his hand comes upon your hand, ay, suddenly it, it happens as if you are playing. But then it's as real as anything. Sister, when the Holy Ghost comes upon your life, he amplifies your beauty. There is a level of beauty that people, they know there is something about you. It's not like you are the finest lady everywhere. But they are seeing the beauty that, it, that is interfacing both the physical and the spirit realm. The brother talks to you and he cannot sleep again. He knows he spoke to two people. Hallelujah. And so you greet someone and you tell the person, God bless you. And that word comes with an anointing because there is another personality say i am never alone say it again i am never alone there is a personality that walks with me that talks with me see if you carry this mindset if you carry this mindset it will change your life oh i'm never alone he said yeah though i walk through the valley of the shadow of death i fear no evil why for thou art with me for you are with me when i go for meetings and i see sick people and i see hungry people hungry for the things of god and i see stubborn people there are people that when you see in a meeting if the holy ghost is not with you start crying because you say in jesus name they are not even answering amen you see you they are as complicated as whatever you know you are in for a surprise it's at that time you can lean on the strength of one who is greater than you and you know that the holy spirit is going to do something in their lives and someone sometimes when i see people who come for koinonia you know when i follow the the, the pictures you see the person who came you know that someone brought him because he's even surprised he's just standing outside and wondering and you know this person does not even know why he came the ability of the spirit have you ignored the ministry of the holy spirit in your life this has nothing to do with just ministry it has to do with every area of your life so you must respect his ministry the holy ghost is a gentleman the limit to which you allow him to come into your life is the limit to which he remains revelations 320 let's hurry up holy spirit thou art welcome in this place holy spirit thou art welcome in this place holy Lord and father of mercy thou art 
seven churches they were already saved this is not a scripture for sinners he was writing to the seven churches in asia minor but he said behold i stand like a guy comes to propose to a lady you can't just grab a lady and say you are my wife forget about those things they used to do before you are my wife and you know behold i come and i stand i seek intimacy I seek intimacy but I will not bump into your life because you have a will you can choose to reject me and I will go are you getting my point now he said behold I stand as mighty as I am I'm able to change your life but I stand he says and I knock if any man hear my voice that means you can be so distracted you do not even hear his voice but if for any reason you hear my voice and what open the door what does it mean to open the door receive my ministry consider it that i am relevant enough consider it that without me you will lose relevance without me there's no spiritual power without me you will struggle that i am able to bring beauty and glory out of your life out of your church out of your fellowship consider it that you don't need to relocate what you need is not to come closer to the people jesus was on the mountain crowds came in the desert crowds came all these excuses we give there are various ways of explaining the consequences of the absence of koinonia if my church was in abuja people would have come i know that if i had money i would have paid for everything i would have done beautiful backdrop it's a lie it's a lie there is a presence that draws people it's called anakazo it's a compelling power of the spirit believe what i'm telling you no human being can resist it no matter how stubborn you are listen this is the power that created the heavens and the earth this is the power that raised christ from the dead oh no you are too small to resist it when the ministry of the holy spirit is allowed and permitted in a church in a building you will see supernatural things that will amaze you the reason why things look very difficult in churches and ministries is because we have boxed the holy spirit we are embarrassed to tell the people that he is greater than us we are threatened like two business partners who have begun to fight themselves young gicho wrote a book the secret of his building the 700 000 city in show he wrote that book i read that book years ago holy spirit my senior partner he wrote another book the fourth dimension there is more to this man you see i'm not so smart in myself come on now ah. but there is one who can bring beauty and glory out of your life but he's standing tonight listen he's knocking You've struggled all your life to be relevant. Man of God, you have struggled. You've told lies with miracles that didn't happen because of the absence of his presence. And he's saying there is no need. You can get into the real thing. You have exaggerated the number of your church members because you are embarrassed. You have said all kinds of things competing with people. He's saying there is no need. I can give you something authentic. Sister, you have envied everybody you can see. 
and the Holy Spirit is saying there's no need there is beauty and glory he's called the spirit of glory he does something to you do you know that the Holy Spirit can alter your physical form your physical biological form there is there is there is a depth how many of you have seen a man who gets married to his wife and after four or five years they start looking like one another is that true it even happens to some even from relationship before they get married you say ah oh boy when did you start becoming fair say that's none of your business oneness participation how many of you have seen pastors of certain ministries look like their ministers and you know they did not try to cook it up something happened it looks like their physical appearance were altered that's what happened to the apostles in acts the book of acts they looked like jesus that's what happened to peter when they saw peter they said no peter your talk betrays you it tells you you have been peter said woman me i've not been with jesus but he had been so into oneness that even when he wanted to run away he could not he had taken up the language the character let me tell you something about oneness with the spirit let's see my dear when you become one with the holy spirit see when a spirit comes to walk with a man the spirit begins to leave out its characteristics through that man just like a demon spirit right there was a spirit and it was the posture of that spirit the woman who was bound for 18 years as you when you are praying for people and you know during deliverance sessions you see people acting like animals and acting like snakes because the spirit that oppresses them is trying to manifest its characteristic through their faculties so when you walk with the spirit without struggle that is the real revelation of grace you start seeing the love of god at work in you are you seeing the point now there are times that the holy spirit is grieved about certain things and you start crying physically because you are now you have there is a sharing together he can pour into you his burden hallelujah there are times that the holy ghost is excited so you are praying in tongues we we'll talk about that you are praying in the secret place and the holy spirit sees that you have entered the realm of victory you cannot see it and he starts rejoicing and you start laughing you see now you have not seen it but because you are one he starts letting you share in the victory that's why when a sick body is healed the holy ghost doesn't just appear and say all right stand let me shine congregation i am the one you are the only one who is left that is your own benefit of coming into oneness and so people look and your face on posters and billboards and people say this is the great man and you who because you have wisdom you run back and say spirit of god i'm not foolish we are together it's the biggest secret that i've learned the ministry of the holy spirit let everything in my life give way if you leave me with the holy spirit you have not done anything to me hallelujah a great man of god apostle johnson suleiman i've shared the story here i'll share it again he was praying at a particular point and a great politician came to see him very noble man and so when he came one hour the man of god was still praying two hours he was just in the room three hours the wife got a bit embarrassed his daughter got a bit embarrassed and she went to knock and then he opened the door and she entered and she was like daddy this man Abba, attend to him let him go and he looked at her he said my daughter sit down he said you know why this man is here he's here because of my relationship with the holy spirit if i leave my relationship with the holy spirit because of him he will never return again let him wait there are many of us as koinonia is like this when we see certain dignified people we cannot worship in the presence of god because we're embarrassed the one who makes the world clap for you if you run away from him now are you not foolish because they will not clap again the one who has made you a celebrity the one who took you from the wilderness some of us we know where we are coming from hallelujah look how he's brought beauty and glory out of your life i love you forever i love you forever i love you forever lord 
See, my mom sent me a text. My mom sent me a text that blessed me so much. You know what she told me in the text? Um, she's with her husband in Lagos. And they sent me a text. Ah, now. She said, she calls me her father. So she said, my father, make sure you don't buy a car with tinted glasses. Because police people will disturb you. I hope you take note of that. Bless you or love you or whatever it is. I said, ah! You know what it means for a mother to be so confident that her son is a success? She knows that if I'm not going to go and carry any kind of thing and manage, she's advising me in advance. She said, buy a, don't buy a car with tinted glass. That's a level of trust and confidence. Are you getting my point? Can that be your testimony? Can your father look at you and say, son, I know you will build a house for me. Please, when you are building it, can you make the kitchen a bit larger? And he knows you are not going to say, are you joking? One plot of land? No. Hallelujah. I remember years ago, someone met me and we were talking about purpose and destiny. A good friend of mine. And he told me something. He said, sir, I'm more confident about your life than I am about my own life. It's not, he's not in, so he's just saying, when I look at you, I can guarantee that you will be a success, even more than I can guarantee my own success. And I told him, change it. Change it. There is a revelation you can have. John 14, 17. John 14, 17. Everyone say after me, Holy Spirit, I open up myself. Say it seriously, Holy Spirit. I open up myself to the fullness of your ministry to the multifaceted dimensions of your ministry he said even the spirit of truth he said the world cannot do what that means there are people who do not receive the spirit the world cannot receive him because it yet him not neither knoweth him he said for you but you know him for he dwelleth with you and he shall be in you. Alos Paracletos, the helper. When the Holy Ghost comes into your life, he helps you. There are things he does not do for you, but he assists you. Let's rush. What are the components of true fellowship? Number one, the study of the word. The study of the word. These are the things you do in that secret place. The components that make up true fellowship, koinonia with the spirit. Number one, the study of the word. If you claim you are in intimacy with the Holy Spirit and you don't at least have a commitment, if, even if you don't have a desire, you must have a commitment. Because there are times you may not have a desire, but you must have the commitment. Are you getting my point? Mm. There are times, listen, there are times you may not have the desire to study. Just like there are times you may not have desire to go to work or go to class. But you have the commitment. Praise God. What is the relevance of studying the word? It gives us an understanding of the ways of God. It gives us an understanding of the ways of God. The thoughts of God. And the mindset of God. We must study the word of God. Contained in this book. Listen. When you listen to my teachings. Or you read my books for instance. In that book is a communication of my persuasions. Is that true? A book is simply a documentation of persuasions. When I'm persuaded about a philosophy. Or an idea. Or a pattern of thought. I document it. So when you study my books. It is possible to begin to think like me even without seeing me because you've explored my material so much you have submitted yourself to my thinking pattern and that's what leadership is all about influencing people to come to a point where they adopt your value system by using influence and not force Saddam Hussein and all of these people Adolf Hitler they were bad leaders because they caused people to adopt their ideology by using force and cruelty. But look at Jesus. 
he made his life a template of his ideology so that when we saw it we'll be able to align to it are you getting my point the word of god the the greek word for word there is logos and and it's translated thoughts the thoughts of a man printed the thoughts the thinking pattern of a man and philippians chapter 2 from verse 5 says this he said let this mind let this mindset let this ideology let this frame of work this plane of judgment let it be in you which was also in christ and the word christ is christos the spirit of god hallelujah let this mind be in you that means there is a mindset everybody say mindset everybody say programming the word of god does something to you i've shared this if i if i pick comma dear you are a microbiology right biochemistry this is a biochemist for instance watch this some years ago this lady came not knowing anything about biochemistry is that true but there was a curriculum is that true that had been created with the goal of transforming her did they change her body did they injure her they just passed her to a system for a period of time and the lecturers looked at her and felt she was qualified to be awarded a degree so the word of god is his school of training you where you interact with his thinking pattern it's not a devotional to make you feel spiritual the word of god is his thought his mindset his ideology bless you my dear so all the while you've been taught all your life that if you want to be rich money doesn't grow on trees hoard as much as you can hoard cheat everybody kill if it's possible but then when you explore the mind of god the constitution that governs the operation of the kingdom you will find out that there is he that scattereth and yet increaseth there is he that withholded more than his meat and tends to poverty now you are in conflict there are two mindsets are you getting my point now and when you submit to the word of god you have permitted the word let means permit permit this mind hallelujah so culturally you have been taught that when you envy people and fight with people then you become the big boss ah and then you come and you study that when you come into christ there is a new law there is a new operation of love that works in you hallelujah everybody say the word of god reveals to me god's ideologies god's perspective and then it also reveals to you god's opinion about every matter there are many opinions brothers and sisters the word of god reveals to you god's opinion i'll be chipping a lot of things to bless us come share you listen if I want to marry this lady now, I don't need to go and meet a devil like many of us go around scouting for everybody and they just say, just tell me. Uh -uh. The word of God. It, as a young man, you want to get married. Are you getting my point now? Culturally, you are taught, just go to the village, carry anybody that is available, save Johnny, flog it out in the marriage. Yeah, after all, you are the man. Eventually, you will survive. Two of you will be f tired of fighting and you will now sit down on the round table to discuss how to move your home forward that's a cultural way but according to scripture number one you know that is god's will for you to marry male and female he created them not two males not two females male and female so it is very clear that you have god did not create a man and a will so if you find out that you're having desire for fish to marry you know that you need to run for miracle service there's something wrong but listen listen i'm teaching you how to adopt the mind of god see that if you find out you're having a desire for another man or another lady you know that you need help quick quick either a retreat or prayer anyone you need it quick now watch this i'm showing you how the mindset of god affects you right when you now go to study the I, i'm reading now as a gentleman who wants to settle down and the bible says for this cause shall a man not a boy so the first question is what makes a man I, i'm showing you how to study and meditate upon the word of god and he said shall a man leave his father and mother 
that means he must be independent and there are several things that bring for independent responsibility some level of financial security some level of mental stability are you seeing how i'm building on god's mindset leave his father and mother and cleave to his wife not his wife and other concubines his wife right and they too shall become what one flesh automatically it tells me that the lady i'm going to marry is not a house girl it's not a kicking machine to beat her up every time a business deal doesn't go well are you getting my point now and then i study from god's word he said children are a heritage from the lord not a product of a man and a woman they are heritage from the lord so i bend to the mindset of god whereas i'm the kind of person that claims i'm a hot guy yo i can never do this all this nonsense that we carry from different cultures and you now come i'm this in our village ladies kneel down and lie down and lick our leg in our village when ladies cook soup is in one plate food is in one plate you now submit to the word of god you either choose to carry your village to your destiny or drop it and pick up the mindset choose ye this day the bible says that means you can choose are you getting my point now and i say lady when you make up your mind i say no me i'm not going to do anything no any man that i will give it to him i'm not i'm not cooking for any man i'm this and that we are women i'm independent i have my own rights too then you read wives you first ask yourself am i a wife with this noise i'm making you see that because if you are not a wife he was not talking to you you can continue doing what you are doing but if you are a wife the bible says submit to your husband in everything everything it did not leave you with a choice this is the law of the kingdom and so you now bring yourself and say well talk god this is how you have made it i subscribe to your government hallelujah so if you are one who is lazy and not given to prayer and you find out the bible says luke 18 verse 1 he spake a parable to the end that men ought always to pray and not to faint automatically you know that you will submit the goal of studying the word is not to give yourself head knowledge that puffs up every time you study the word find the principles of the kingdom the next thing is submit to their operations bless you my you see the reason why our study of the word does not profit us most of the time because the truth is many of us use devotionals we use books but when we study the word of god we do not submit number one many of us study and argue it when you just study you see something that stings your ego and you just jump it say kite i don't like this this book of colossians let me let me go to something else what is my confidence what what assurance do i have that i'm submitting to a mindset that will not disappoint me he said for i know the thoughts that i think towards you jeremiah 29 verse 11 he said they are thoughts of good you see the word thoughts again my mindset towards you this mindset that i propose to you like a man comes to meet a lady and says look i will take care of you if you go with me in this journey forget about what you see now we are soaking gary but at the, the end is peace that's what god is doing with his word right he's bringing you a proposal and he's saying look 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 how your mindset has made your life the quality of your life so far is a product of your ideologies can you bend and let me propose this mindset i know this the thoughts that i think towards you they are thoughts that will bring you good thoughts of good and not of evil to bring you a future and an expected end hallelujah everybody say the study of the word when you study the word you understand the ways of god and when you understand the ways of god you will easily be able to detect error are you getting my point so when you see an operation that looks like god but does not line up with the value system and the ideologies of the kingdom although it looks spiritual you can judge it by the authority of the word are you getting my point now
Number two. Asian words ever true, changing me and changing you. We have come, we open hearts. Oh, let the Asian words be I never study my Bible as if I'm doing a Bible quiz or competition. Many of us believe in our minds we are used to competitions. So when you start studying, you now come and meet your friend and say, I finished Colossians today. I was just going through it. I even started Ephesians. How has it changed your life? Who cares? Who cares whether you read the book? No. Listen, don't be under pressure. It is not spirituality to say, I finished my Bible 20 times. If we cannot see the fruit in your life, it's like saying, I know Jonathan. Every day you are telling us you know Jonathan. And we are still the same level. We say, oh God, you are lying somewhere. You are lying somewhere. Because we know the way even Jonathan's houseboy is. You are shouting every time. Jonathan is my, my, my father's brother. If not because of situation, I would have grown in his house. You are telling at a point in time. We know that you are telling a lie. That's how it is. So every time if you speak, I'm a word addict. I'm studying the word. Yet we are not seeing your life. You are the first to get angry. You are the first to slap people. You are the first to insult people. You are the first to use words that are not cultured by the spirit. We know you have not been with God. There is an absence of koinonia. Listen. There are parameters that can measure if the word of God is growing in you. The measure of the word of God in you is the measure of the lordship of Christ in your life. Are you getting my point? He said, my little children in whom I travel until Christ be formed. So I see the degree to which you have submitted to the word of God. That is the degree to which Jesus has become Lord in your life. Experientially. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Take your time and study the word of God. Listen, you must be strategic about your studying the word of God. Every day we have devotionals to help us here. But you don't have all the time to study the word of God for eight hours every day. That's not how to grow. That's a religious way. There are many of us that put ourselves under unnecessary pressure. I don't study the word of God like that. Every day I look at, there are times I get up in the morning, there's no time for anything. I have so much activities, but I dedicate periodic times when I stay with the word of God intentionally for the purpose of discovering the gems and the treasure in the word and applying it in my life. How have you been studying your word? So that you can quote. Some of us even have some Bible memory aids that help us. Philippians 4 13. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Uh, this and that and that. Who shall ascend to the hill of the Lord? Jeremiah chapter this and that. Da, 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 da. And people say, Whoa, whoa, your life is not changing. You are quoting dangerous scriptural principles that have changed the lives of ancient men. But because this thing was not done for the purpose of intimacy, it was simply done to find relevance outside of the spirit. I'm not against Bible recitation. If you stay with a man so much, you should be able to know his words. Your word have I hidden in my heart. The Bible says that I may not sin against you. How shall a young man keep his way pure? Not by trying to run away from iniquity. He said, but by meditating. By meditating. By meditating. So my value systems change. Hallelujah. Number two. The components that make for true intimacy, true fellowship. Number two is a life of praise and worship. Praise and worship. What does praise and worship do? It creates the atmosphere for the spirit of God to manifest himself and to commune with you. The Holy Ghost does not show up everywhere. His manifest presence, his omnipresence. The ability to be everywhere is there. Where can I hide from your presence? The psalmist says. But he's manifest his revealed presence. That he reveals himself for the purpose of communion. It doesn't happen everywhere. Look at me. Have you seen two people in a relationship? When it's evening and they want to really sit down and talk. 
Does the guy just look and tell the lady to sit down? And then him too, he just sits down in the middle of a junction. That was your day. What do you think the lady would do? Ah, the lady would say, this is a picture of many things to come. I'm plotting this graph and it's not heading up to your tent, O ye Israel. You see that? There is always a preparation. Because this guy loves this lady or he's trying to win her heart. He would dress the place, he would arrange it. If she likes red flowers, somebody that you know has no business with red will go out of his way. Buy red, buy anything that looks like red. It may be even the ox blood. To him is red. At least he tried. He will bring it and arrange something. And says, I did this for you. I prepared this place. This is your own place. Sit down. Many of us do not know that there is a geography where God meets with men. You can set up an altar, a meeting place. Solomon dedicated a place in the temple and he said, Oh Lord, let this be your resting place. Wherever people are, if they turn to Jerusalem and pray, hearken to them. Hallelujah. You can make your house or your room an altar. There are people here in this church building. You see them in the night. They come. Some of them pray. There are some of us, our rooms, there are some of us, certain places, some toilets, some garages. It doesn't matter where. People just lock themselves somewhere and just say, Lord, I have come to fellowship. And you just sing songs of worship. I love you, Lord. And I lift my hands. That's fellowship, koinonia. To worship you. And you're luring him with your worship. Because he cannot resist worship. Oh my soul rejoice. Take joy my king. And your phone is ringing and you leave it there. It's the guy that says you should send your bank account and you leave it there. In what you hear. The devil is saying, keep singing. You will finish singing and eat your fingers. Let it be a sweet. And he's watching. He's watching. He's seeing the way other things do not mean nothing in his presence. Priority. Sister, you are just singing, I love you, Lord. And Prince Charming is flashing. Ha! Your body. Abel wants to worship. Cain is saying, you better call now that things are working for you. You have been praying and submitting prayer requests. This guy is already being nice now. Let it be a sweet, sweet sound. Anything you love above the secret place is an idol. I don't care what it is. Abraham took his son son i love you but before you came i was in love with another and not your presence will kill that love he dropped that boy and lifted the knife the reason why many of us may never encounter certain dimensions of glorious things is because god tested you with that thing and his presence and you gave up his presence for it is the same thing as trading your birthright for a pot of soup soup that you eat and three hours later you are hungry Hallelujah. When I'm spending time with God, let the whole world catch fire. Let it catch fire. It's amazing how the devil can create so much distractions. There are some of us who, when we come to the presence of God, that's the time to pick. You just see a lady's hair. Say, that's the hair I've been talking to you about. Let me snap it quickly. And you become a commentator on whatsapp and what they call it all those things and the devil knows when to disturb you he waits until it's time for the presence it's time for you to fellowship with the spirit he now brings up all sorts of things psalm 100 verse 2 says come before him with singing that is the protocol of his presence sing to the spirit Many of you don't sing. Every man that moves in the anointing is a man of worship. It's a secret of the anointing. That's why you see us take our time. That's why you see these people standing. You don't want to imagine the sacrifice that they spend. I'm on stage and they're on stage with me even if it's for 10 hours. 
and the keyboard is playing why because he's worshiping we are creating the atmosphere he said i will reveal my dark sayings upon the harp the prophet knew this and so he said bring me a mistrial i need i cannot talk i need to bring because the holy spirit was not resident in them he would come and he said there is a technology in the spirit that invokes his presence that's what we do during our traditional festivals you see some people who just tie some things around and they come and they are dancing and singing for hours like fools and when the spirit they are calling finally arrives you will know it has arrived confusion accidents all sorts of things registering his presence i'm here you ask for it in india many of you have watched them they blow flutes and they sing and those serpents begin to come out and people come to watch music is a law of spiritual operation it's not just a principle that's why when you listen to all these classical musics orchestras you know and and all this contemporary worship they do something to your spirit i have a bad voice so what you are not presenting a special number it's called the secret place even if you are not called into the ministry of worship god is not complaining he loves it the way it is sing any song compose your own song hallelujah have you seen a lady in love and the guy said i want to sing for you because his friend said that's what i did and the guy is not a good musician he doesn't even know that the key he's taking is not even the key of the right song he's mixing words he's just singing all sorts of songs and because the lady loves she's saying wow you mean you learned this song today and the guy is saying you cannot imagine the days of rehearsal and he's making all sorts of mistakes listen i'm showing you something about some of you it has happened to you that's why you're laughing you are seeing how this guy is doing his best he's even closing his eyes he's communicating his passion on a very good day you'd have gotten up to work but you appreciate that's how the holy ghost is he's not complaining he's not complaining we can tell you here that your voice is not good but when you're in the sea go off key go up go down sing bass sing anything is you and him it's called koinonia there are not many people invited he not them that dwell in the secret place the secret place is not a congregation it's a place where you meet it's a love affair it's an intercourse it's called koinonia dance with me remember our song lover of my soul to the song of all songs this is to the holy spirit would you dance with me oh lover of my soul to the song of all songs let's sing one more time i'm making you fall in love with him dance with me your lover of my soul to the song of all songs listen 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 and while you are singing this song suddenly his shakina fills the room you know he's in that place i mean your whole body is shaking this guy is responding your your love song is attracting him and you're just shaking and you're wondering scriptures are just coming in your mind and as that is happening god is talking to people bless him bless her favor him all that is happening in the secret place there are sicknesses and challenges there are burdens that you have and you take to the secret place and you're saying oh lord about this cgpa i just saw my cgpa five carryovers and he gives you a song to sing for him because when you sing it brings him and that song begins to comfort you whereas you were crying about something after meeting with him you wipe your tears and you get up and walk like a king 
you have a challenge in your life you are struggling with a habit you are struggling with something and you go to his presence and you begin to sing and say lord something else is taking your place in my life and i'm reporting to you i'm a faithful bride i'm reporting to you that pornography wants to steal your place in my life i'm reporting to you that pride in ministry is taking your place and as a jealous god like a man who is fighting for his bride he will come and say let me see that devil that stands would you dance with me, oh, lover of my soul, to the song of all songs? Listen, there is not there are people when you tell secrets about your life, you are in trouble. It's as you would have just gone to nta and announce to the whole world because they will tell everybody they are just shh, don't tell anybody oh. the next person will tell sister b say i did i don't know you if anything happens i've never met you but the holy ghost is the only one who can listen to everything about you and still not complain i don't know one man who has been with his wife and they've never had reason the holy spirit will never quarrel you you come with your weaknesses broken you come with all sorts of things when men reject you when that guy says you're good for nothing you refuse to sleep with me go you coming back to the secret place that's the place of strength men of god who do not have the secret place when persecution starts and now see the, the apostolic ministry comes with heavy persecution if you are not a man of the secret place you will never last men will question the source of your anointing men will question the reason why crowds are gathered like this men will question all kinds of things when men shout and people oh you think it's everybody that sends me nice text messages i wish so i wish so when i get all those things i look forward to my hour of prayer and i just go into his presence and i lie down flat the one who can love me the way i am men will tell you you are looking too fat you are looking too slim the holy spirit says you are okay just stay there you are okay i don't need any shedding weight i don't need your hair is not rough you are okay come on now ladies you have given your heart to a man of inferior value why not come to this spirit you gave your whole life to a man you were sure that you are not the only one in his life but this is one who has pledged commitment with you forever You never know what true love is until you meet the Holy Spirit. When you meet the Holy Spirit, you start searching for a man that can give you the same effect in your secret place. And if you don't find it, you don't say yes to him. So when one brother comes because he likes you, he now wears suit and comes for koinonia. When he's talking to you, you are looking for that spiritual effect that cannot be faked. And you say, my brother, you talk like you're a Christian, but I don't see that signature. Meaning you are not a man of the secret place. Hallelujah. Worship. Do you, do you spend time? I'm telling you, when I'm in the presence of God, I'm not Apostle Joshua Selman. I throw away all of those things and I roll before him and I cry like a baby. And this is how I prepare for meetings. Brothers and sisters, this is how I prepare for meetings. I talk to the Lord and I say, Lord, Friday is miracle service and so many people are coming right now and I cannot help them. I'm, I'm but a young man. There are so many expectations on me and I hear the Spirit of God telling me, don't worry, we'll go together. We'll do this. That's why when I sit down, in my mind i'm saying okay holy spirit worship team is now ministering we are ready to go and i can just feel him saying go 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 and do it prove to the people that you are not alone ah! and as he left me not once many guys will run away from you when the going gets tough is that true i remember a guy who was making noise about a lady i will marry her he found out that she had a problem with bedwetting and it was a demonic problem the lady was a very responsible and godly lady it's just that it had been there for a while when he found out ah the brother said you know guys i'm busy oh, please don't disturb me i'm busy i'm busy i'm busy i'm busy and the day this lady came and she cried to me and he paid me because i know the brother i said such a virtuous lady so you are already trying to you've not gotten married 
but there is something about her life you are not proud of and you are now running away that's the same thing you will do when you get married but the holy ghost he will give you a garment you want stain it outside when you come you see him holding soap already waiting for you while you are trying to explain he says there's no need that you came into my presence is a sign that you are not a rebel to the song of all songs can we sing this song just once as i prepare to round up would you dance with me Just the voices, just one more time, from the depths of your heart. Would you dance with me, oh lover of my soul, to the song of all songs? The third component of intimacy with the Holy Ghost is prayer. The first is the study of the word. The second is the ministry of heartfelt praise and worship. God blesses you by a keyboard. God blesses you by a guitar. Are you getting my point? Even if it's only one key, learn it. CFG and the minor. Just sit down and lie down. That's all you know. You are not learning it to sing somewhere. One day people will come and listen to you. I remember when years ago when i used to be we were three myself steve strings and andy now called amber sage is a gospel musician three of us were roommates then in the Fodio, and we would worship goodness i was like a madman sometimes i would lie down and they used to keep the keyboard of winners campus fellowship then then steve was the vice president of winners campus fellowship so they used to keep the equipment in our room praise god and i'll just get on the keyboard and steve will just take the guitar and you know his fingers those those anointed fingers goodness and steve will begin to play and while we're just playing the glory of god one night something happened i'll never forget myself andy and steve we were just singing and worshiping for hours and then we held three of our hands and brothers and sisters i tell you the truth we could not lift our hands god came into that room when you see a man of the secret he's ever looking young it's not about eating well. He shall be like a tree that is planted by the streams of water which yields its fruit in season and whose leaf does not wither. You see a man of 60 years, 65 years looking as if there is a supernatural ability working because there truly is. If it's a life-giving spirit and you stay with a life-giving spirit for so long, something happens to you. Do you believe me? Absolutely. Prayers. Especially praying in the spirit. Praying in the spirit is a mystery that initiates and sustains true communion. Many of us come from circles where the subject of praying in tongues has been challenged. I came from an orthodox background and I understand what it means. I went to a, a seminary and I, I have touched different orthodox circles. So I understand the way Pentecostals taught it was a terrible way. Nobody would... They, 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 and, and then all of the rascality and madness that happened around praying in tongues made it look as though when the Holy Spirit came upon people, he made them idiots. They did not teach us that tongues was a mystery. It was a language of heaven that was supposed to enforce communion. It's a secret code of communication. We were not taught like that. I'll never forget the day they were going to pray for us to be filled with the Holy Ghost. I didn't understand anything. The man was teaching, I was feeling like sleeping. The only thing I know is he called two people and he told one to run on one leg and the other one ran on two legs. And he said, that's it, praying in understanding tongues. That's all I remember. 
And then we sang one song. Hallelujah, Jehovah reigns. Hallelujah, Jehovah reigns. Hallelujah, Jehovah reigns. Give him the glory that he deserves. That's all. And then we got filled with the Holy Ghost. When I started praying in tongues, I was wondering. I said, ah, oh God, I hope I'm not just joining everybody and lying. Maybe they receive the real thing. Because some people were falling me. I didn't fall. Nothing happened. But I was praying at least. I doubted that thing for days. But I began to see transformation in my life. In JS2, I was made the timekeeper of the whole school. There was a grace in my life that I could not explain. JS2, very small boy. Quarter to five, every day, the Holy Ghost would wake me. Physically. Someone would tap me. Quarter to five. Quarter to five. We had a matron called Miss Rhoda. Wonderful woman. She's gone to be with the Lord now. One day, when I woke up, five on the dot, I would ring the bell. She called me and laid hands. She said, you're an exceptional person. I would study just once. I'm serious. I never have to read again. Once. It was supernatural. Then we started one, one prayer evening meeting called Operation Catacruz. We were tired of the nonsense that was happening around. So we, myself and five guys, we were like the apostles of the school. Five of us, very small. We did wonderful things. Wonderful things. One of them was a sickler. He was like our Peter. And all through that time, that, that devil of infirmity left. Oh, we did mighty things. I prayed for people who were stammerers. And all of a sudden, the, stammer, the stammering would leave. I, for us, it was not a big deal. Because nobody taught us that this thing was great. You need honorarium. You're a great man. No. We just did our thing. And then at a point, they now started bringing a lot of priests and they were teaching. They brought a lot of people. They taught and we knew it was us they were talking to. And then eventually, we threw away all these things of God. It was something in my spirit. And when we threw away all those things, it was in less than two months, our leader died. I was with him the final moments in the hospital. His ribs were swollen. That sickness came back. What he was delivered from. They were born triplets. One died. There's only one who is alive now. And I looked at him in the hospital. I told him, don't worry, you'll be fine. Little did I know that that would be the last time. Because we ignored the ministry of the Holy Spirit. I cried one day, many years, when I realized that that was the reason. We left him. We actually asked him to walk out of our lives. Take your place. Take your place. I will never ask you to walk out of my life. Take your place. Take your place. That gentleman died. Most of the great prayer warriors who were doing great things. I tell you, many of them today, some of them are drunkards, some of them are whatever because they preach to us that forget the, you know, the Holy Spirit, blah, 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 blah. Some of you right now, you are at the verge of throwing away. The only thing you have not thrown is praying in tongues. You've thrown every other thing. Prayers. Prayer opens us up to sensitivity. It opens us up through sensitivity, sorry, to the promptings and the impulses of the spirit. The ministry of prayer opens us up, makes us sensitive. You can get more of that on my teaching, spiritual perception. Opens your organs of interacting with spiritual things. And then you begin to move in certain operations of the spirit. The word of knowledge, the knowing of the spirit, the witness of the spirit. All of these things are activated in the place of prayer. Prayer empowers us to hear his voice. The Bible says while they prayed, while they prayed, the Holy Ghost spoke to them. Not while they sat down, while they prayed, the Holy Ghost spoke to them. He said, separate me Paul and Barnabas. While they prayed. Let's hurry up. Number four. Corporate fellowship with the brethren components that bring intimacy or components of true fellowship corporate fellowship with the brethren very important 
Acts chapter 13 verse 2 the Bible says while they prayed and fasted they prayed they sang the Holy Ghost said unto them not unto one man let me tell you the importance of corporate fellowship like this it gives you the opportunity to partake of the dealings of the spirit in the life of others are you getting my point now so levels that your personal intimacy with the Holy Spirit has not brought you when you come together is like a corporate receiving hallelujah Psalms 133 verse 1 says behold how good and pleasant it is when brethren dwell together in unity and he begins to describe it he says it's like the oil that comes upon the head of Aaron down to his bird down to his cat even to his garment he said for there God has commanded the blessing behold how good and pleasant it is the Bible says Acts chapter 2 verse 1 it says now when the day of Pentecost was fully come they were all gathered together in one accord the Holy Ghost never came until they were together there is the mystery of corporate fellowship not just emptying sitting down and occupying empty pews no fellowship do you know that you can be together as a congregation but not have fellowship because there's bitterness there's anger there's competition there's party spirit seditions and all kinds of things but when you come that's why one of our core value the first of our core value as a ministry is love love not power not anointing not intimacy love love the bond of perfectness there is only fellowship when there is true love when two people are fighting the first thing that disappears is laughter laughter absence of laughter is a sign that something is wrong corporate fellowship what does it do it opens us to other dimensions of his dealings it creates oneness in the body the bible says in acts chapter in, in ephesians chapter 4 it says till we all come to the unity of the faith the unity of the faith the same understanding as a body finally what are the rewards of true fellowship let me round up with this i have to hurry up remember our topic is koinonia the ancient secret ancient secrets to power so what is the reward what is the reward what is the reward huh. be sensitive now because i sense the power of the holy spirit i'm telling you every time i just begin to talk about the holy spirit it's like it's like a magnet that you cannot resist although our time is fast spent but somebody must receive something tonight in the name of jesus christ what are the rewards of fellowship with the holy spirit i'll give you just three of them number one the reward the child the proceed of that intercourse between you and the spirit the same way when a man meets his wife something leaves that man to his wife and over time a child is born that child is the consummation of their oneness is that true when you stay with the holy spirit when koinonia is at work in your life certain things must happen number one authentic spiritual power authentic spiritual power i said authentic because there are all kinds of things all kinds of things right now authentic spiritual power authentic spiritual power the anointing for miracles the anointing for signs and wonders they are a product of intimacy brothers and sisters listen to me if you've been called into the apostolic ministry or prophetic ministry or teaching or pastoral any of the fivefold ministry you need the anointing for supernatural miracles signs and wonders men can forget what you say but they will never forget the impact of your meeting upon their lives many pastors are struggling they keep speaking but there is no grace there is no anointing there is no authentic anointing I'm not talking about laying hands on people that your words they do something to the physical bodies of those listening they do something to their minds 
the words do something the bible says and the lord walking with them confirming the words he said the spirit of the lord is upon me because he has anointed me he has smeared me with oil where did that happen in the in the secret place while i was fellowshipping with the holy ghost a deposit of his ability rubbed off on me and i come out of the secret place with that ability the bible says the spirit drove jesus to the wilderness and he was there he was there for how long now 40 days and at the end of it the bible says he returned with the in the power of the spirit he returned in the power of the spirit he returned in the power of the spirit you want to see authentic power you want to see the anointing of the spirit brothers and sisters i believe in impartation from men of god but the holy spirit is the greatest custodian of the anointing you stay with him you have the anointing without measure dimensions of his anointing comes upon your life brothers and sisters listen it has nothing i don't care how weak you are right now if you stay with the holy ghost man woman boy girl including the little ones you will contact something that is tangible the world may criticize you but they cannot deny what is at work in your life you are the power in me you are the fire at work when you see mighty works there is an anointing you are my ever-present helper holy spirit ah, yeah. and he anoints you so an ordinary man brothers and sisters an ordinary timid joshua selman when his anointing comes upon you look at samson he was a man who was weak but when the anointing came upon him he did mighty things and men will look at you they will see small you but there is big jesus there is big holy spirit so men will invite you for meetings thousands of people and when you walk through and see those wheelchairs and those blind eyes you know that it's not just about talking nonsense it's either it is there or not and you stretch your hands and you speak and say in the name of the lord jesus blind eyes open and you are hearing people shouting i can see and you are flattered yourself because you know that you are not the custodian of this this is what happens in koinonia he blesses us with his presence and so we can command devils to go and they must leave and we can command sicknesses to go and we can speak to blood conditions and change them and we can speak to situations and alter destinies a dear lady of ours wrote her exams and her wayek and, and when the results came out you know she was so excited sent me a text yesterday i met with her briefly today and this lady just nailed it on point i mean i looked i said goodness this is great the holy ghost can take a weak person mary said how shall these things be oh lord how will i have an international ministry as weak as i am how can this guitar produce an international ministry oh lord is it true that one day i will stand before the nations and god is saying do not underestimate the power of the anointing upon the life of a man they will pay you they will lodge you in hotels and you are there wondering oh god no there is this treasure you are an earthen vessel but there is a treasure the only way to take advantage of it is to carry you along because it's in you same power that conquered the grave lives in me lives in me oh i'm anointed say i'm anointed your love that rescued the earth lives in me listen brothers and sisters it's on the strength of the secret place that we can tell you you will never go back the same you see that that is what is responsible many of you came here probably for the first time you just said let's come and see what happened and you came and you encountered the anointing of the spirit if you are a preacher in this place stop doing ministry without the anointing you're going to fight everybody around you because of anger you will hate everybody around you because of competition and intimidation many preachers are angry with anointed people today because they they are unwilling 
to subscribe to the terms of authentic power it happens once in a while it just happens by magic and then when they see this happen in the lives of people especially when the person is a young man because it's not an issue of age whoever can pay that price the power that truly brings revival and transformation brothers and sisters is one thing to gather people but it's another thing for their lives to be changed there are many churches that the lives of the members are not being changed can i tell you the truth i know that crowd is not an ultimate basis to measure growth and impact but let me tell you sincerely when people are being changed they will come again and again and come there that this guy was an armed robber he was a bad person an occultist all of a sudden he comes to koinonia for three or four weeks there are so many people especially many of the leaders and the workers today by the grace of god i know how these people were when they came some of them were cultists some of them were all sorts of people but the power of the spirit as a minister when people come to your congregation you don't screen them and throw the bad ones there are no bad eggs in the house of god because his anointing can change any man so a man comes with stubborn they say we have tried and tried and he said no not when the authentic power of god comes you can handle any congregation as a pastor they can post you anywhere and it does not matter they post you to a church of 10 members in one year is an avalanche because of the anointing he said it shall come to pass isaiah 10 27 he says the burden shall be taken from off your neck and the yoke from your shoulders and it shall be destroyed not because you went to school not because you can speak english because of the anointing there's too much talk in the body of christ because there is no anointing charles and francis hunter of blessed memory wrote a book they said that one miracle is worth a thousand words how true authentic anointing Acts chapter 19, 11 and 12. The Bible says, and God wrought special miracles. God wrought special miracles. Not just ordinary miracles. Brothers and sisters, if you walk in extraordinary miracles, the only thing you will go through that is bad is criticism. But the hand of God is like a signature. And you write upon the lives of men. He is alive. That's why we will continue doing what we are doing. That's why anyone who comes here will truly be blessed. And we say it with absolute certainty. Not on the strength of ourselves. The Bible says we are not sufficient in ourselves. Our sufficiency is of God. Who has made us able ministers of the New Testament. Not of the letters. Because the letter kills. But the spirit gives life. Number two. The second reward koinonia is multiplied grace multiplied grace multiplied grace what does multiplied grace bring in your life ease of operation write it down i know many struggling ministers they are doing well but you know that this this they are doing ministry as if it's a it's a cross to kill them no sir no sir jesus said my yoke is easy and my burden is light if that yoke is killing you then it's not from god hallelujah ease of operation in your ministry ease of operation in your job there are many people who struggle just for little promotion you have to struggle and bribe and pass no 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 when there is multiplied grace the bible says great grace was upon them great grace Acts chapter 4 verse 31 to 33. When they prayed, the building shook. And the Bible says they were filled with the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Okay, so just write it. We may not run go there because of time. Our time is up. Number three, the last one, and this is the most important I want you to carry tonight. Is that the products, the benefits, the reward of your intimacy with the Holy Spirit is the release of your gifts your talents and your abilities 
please never forget this this applies to every one of us now it's one thing to be gifted but it's another thing for your gift to be anointed you can be gifted and it can be killing you but when your gift is anointed ha! Huh, your gifts and abilities become anointed what does it mean to be anointed it means it is activated and empowered to produce supernatural results so your singing ministry you have great gifts but when he anoints that gift all of a sudden your keyboard that you are playing suddenly you see wheelchairs standing up just because mike is playing that's a gift that has been anointed someone will come up here and just be reciting a poem or be dancing you may belong to a rap group or a dancing ministry and you are dancing and sick bodies are healed that's an ability that has been anointed many of us are gifted and we've spoken about gifts but many of us our gifts are not anointed this is my beloved son he has always been there but now whom i am well pleased hear ye him listen stop trying to draw talents or draw resources forget about those things concentrate on the presence of god when your gifts are anointed people will come when they come they'll come together with their own gifts and their own anointings listen i never for once by the grace of god almighty look at all the brilliant people let me tell you i believe that this ministry has one of the best excellent and most effective workforce and i say this sincerely from the depth of my heart hallelujah from the ushers the worship team there is excellence at our level the prayer department men who are committed you think they are just i never how would i have known them are you getting my point i did not need to worry when you stay in the secret place and your gift becomes anointed distant shores and the islands will see your light has it right yes you are a billionaire ceo but until your gift is anointed you will sit down there stay in the secret place let your gift let your business acumen be anointed and you will do wonders sister you're, you have God blessed you with beauty but it's not anointed that's why it is trivialized you stay in the secret place and let it be anointed the rod of Moses was a great rod but it was not anointed when he dropped it in the presence of God the place of intimacy God said now pick up that rod it's no longer an ordinary rod he said with this rod you will do signs and wonders your academics is great but it has not brought you any blessings because it is not yet anointed. Stop looking for resources. When you draw people, they will come into your life with their resources and abilities. When you contend for an anointing that can solve a millionaire's problem, he will come with his millions. There are many people who try to sit down and learn all kinds of gimmicks to raise money and run ministry. How much money can you raise to run ministry? Stay in the secret place. And while you are in the secret place, you will bless a man who will come with millions and say it's a privilege to sow. Ah! Ask and thou give the nations to me, O Lord. That's the cry of my heart. Distant shores and the islands will see. Listen, I'm telling you, this will come when God gives us the vision to start building. And by the grace of God, when this ministry has entered the next season, our job is to remain in the secret place. It will start attracting all sorts of people. They will come from different countries. You watch and see. They will sponsor the TV satellites and the rest. It's not in my ambition for once to think of how it will be done. Your job is have the potential. Footballers, brothers and sisters, footballers that cannot speak English receive millions of dollars per week because of their gift. 
they never knew that you need a coach they don't even know adidas or puma all they know is that they mastered the art of playing with that ball and people rush and say please endorse our product during olympic one little girl 15 years or thereabout america's sweetheart little black girl who was doing exceptional things this lady could you know do all of those cartwheel and all, all of those gymnastics and she did it so well by the next day that lady was on the face of many privileges in america she doesn't know anything about marketing but the gift of a man when anointed it will call the relevant people right now we don't have people who are professionals and experts in 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 launching satellites and doing this don't worry when you stay in the secret place they will come one day they will come i have seen in my visions white men and people there was a time seven partners multi-billionaires i've seen it many times in my visions and they'll come and say god has instructed us that you and your ministry you are part of our kingdom commitments for life stay in the secret place stop looking for houses and cars don't insult yourself you're not that cheap what you have is valuable a day will come they will fly you in the private jets but you are not carried away remember it's you and the holy ghost in that plane you say holy spirit you promised me and you have kept your promise it doesn't fail the key to commanding uncommon favor is when your gifts are anointed they will draw people from all over god is speaking to someone here we're rounding up listen brothers and sisters the key to timeless relevance relevance regardless of geography or dispensation is when you have gifts that are anointed they will draw nations they will draw nations not people nations the bible says you shall call on one person and nations will answer say i'm gifted and tonight my gift will be anointed there are many people here tonight is the last time you will be at this level take seriously what i'm saying when god anoints your singing ministry you see if god does not anoint you the other way is to start begging everybody please i have an album will you buy it please i have this sponsor me sam help me when you are going for ministration carry me along you see people passing all kinds of complimentary card i'm an anointed man something happened in my meeting 20 people fell under the anointing invite me that is gift that is not anointed because when you are anointed when you are anointed people will love you he said because of the ointment so do the virgins love you it's, i know he was talking about relationship but it's a principle gentiles will not come to you they will come to your light they can criticize you but they will never be able to resist you you will see i i keep sharing it did you know that people bless my mother today people call this woman of god and bless her and sow seeds and do all kinds of things and that is only the beginning the secret of relevance you will never go out of fashion when you stay in the secret place that's why i say the greatest publicity men of god who are always outside running around trying to scrouge for ministry ministry and uh, what do they call it connection and ministry no 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 stay in the secret place jesus was in the manger the white men carried their gifts they started tracing the stars the wise men they were tracing it where is this one who was born he was there lying down they took gold frankincense man these were great men they took it angels were announcing him he was there quietly remain in the secret place and you will see that people are talking about you everywhere from criticism somebody will say why are they criticizing this person let me find out and then he hears a message and say i know why they are criticizing you now while you're there quiet if you are talking and advertising yourself your grace is not anointed let her walk speak for her at the gates listen the secret to entering rest is that the anointing comes upon your gift 
you will rest indeed. The Bible says, let us therefore labor. This is not about struggle. Brothers and sisters, please hear me. The anointing of the Holy Spirit, the fruit, great grace. Your gift, your ability, your talent. It brings rest and establishment. It eliminates the need for envy and competition. When your gifts are anointed truly, you will find no
dearly beloved i hope you were blessed by this message do not keep the video to yourself share to as many as you can to help them bless check our home page for more of our messages subscribe to the channel comment on it like it see you on our next video bye pray 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 for your destiny the phase of development lord grant me the discipline